Hi, it's Gloria Butler. Thanks for tuning in to Gabbing with Girlfriends. And I have a really special guest today. It's, I guess all my guests are special since they're all girlfriends. Um, Lily Blavin is a girlfriend and her mother's a really good friend of mine that um, sadly I haven't seen for ages and ages because she's moved away, I've moved away. And funnily enough, we both almost moved to the same city without even knowing, <clears throat> but sadly we didn't. And um, and I'm desperate to see her soon. So this is nice that I'll be able to see Lily, even though it's only on here. I'm still, um, I'm still happy to see her and have a chat with her and hear about everything she's been up to because she has, I guess I knew her when she was in high school and she's now graduated from USC, but I'll let her tell you that. And she's been super, super, super busy um, following her passion, which is, is awesome because not everybody gets to do that. So um, yeah, I'm I'm really happy to um, to welcome Lily. I think that um, I think this will be a fun one. So um, again, thanks for tuning in. And if you end up liking this this um, podcast, don't forget to. Um, subscribe and keep checking us out because I'm new and it's going to keep getting better and better every week. I think um, I'm having a good time anyway. This is this is my therapy. So um, I think she's almost here. Almost. There hello, she hello. is. Oh, this is fun. Hi, Hi Lily. Lily. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. So I gave you a really brief introduction before you came on saying um, that I'm excited to speak to you and that I've known you since you were in high school and that you're now a USC grad and that you're blessed because you're actually living your passion. And that's so cool because not everybody gets to do that. So yeah. That's your life in a nutshell. So I'll let you elaborate better than I did. Where do we begin? Uh, you could start with high school graduation because, um, yeah, I remember our lunch at Cachonis. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, my high school graduation, you were there. We were in the butterfly room at Chaconis. We and um, I was getting ready to go to USC. I was going to study real estate development, which is a a shocker given uh where my life has led and what I do now um I really wanted to go to USC I was really business focused and real estate development is really growing and it's big and it's uh it's innovative and I I liked that more than the investment banking track um which is which is some of your family background. Yes. Yeah. My, that's what my dad did. Um, and which, uh, you know, I, I'm, sh I'm sure I would have been good at it, but I just had no desire. Um, so real estate development seemed more appealing to me and I knew it wasn't for me after like a year, but I kept at it and was like, maybe it'll, grow on me. And then at the end of sophomore year, I was like, I hate this. Like I need to get out. And it was the end of sophomore year. So I had already done half of the credits needed to graduate. And I went in and was like, I need to change majors. Like I'm, I'm really unhappy. And she was like, okay, well, you're halfway through school. Like there's only two two majors you can take to graduate on time. And like, I wanted to be out of college. Like I- Only two majors because of the credits you already had. So yeah. two may I get it. Only two majors available to graduate on time. And I just wanted to be done with college. I liked working and being an adult more than I liked being a college student. So I was like, I need to be done. And she said, there's gender studies or art history. And I was like, which one do you have to memorize the least in? Least in? And she said, gender studies, art history is all, stu all memorizing. And I was like, done, gender studies it is. She's like, do you want to hear more? I was like, no, no. I'm done. <laughs> up, like, great. And 
I ended up loving it. It was really. What does that mean? I don't even know what it means. It, so it's like the study of gender and like gender roles and um, how it's changed and what it's like now. And it's really interesting. It's really interesting. And what and, do people um, do with it? I have no idea. <laughs> like, I'm really like, I don't know. I, I, a lot of my peers ended up going into entertainment or law school. I think it's kind of like a theater into law school. Um, yeah, but it was, it was great. It was like a lot of reading and writing and, um, it was interesting. It was applicable because, you know, uh, we all are gendered or, or <laughs> maybe not, I don't know, but I, I identify as a woman and uh, I thought it was really interesting learning about the history and, you know, the stereotypical roles, what it's like now. Yeah, I um, bet. No, I bet that was it, interesting. It, it was really, really great. And I graduated, or, you know, it was like junior year and you had to work for a certain amount of hours that semester. I think it was like 200, something like that. And you went in and presented what job you wanted to do that was like in line with your major. And I was like, fuck, like, I don't know what, are we allowed to swear? Sorry. Yeah, I can. I was like, what can I do with this? I really want to work in film. And I found a production company that was run by two women. I didn't know this. So this is yeah. fun for me too, because I'm yeah. learning as well. And I was like, I want to work here. You know, Hollywood is such a male dominated business. You rarely see women as e executives or studio heads. And my professor, mm -hmm. Dr. Diana Lane was like, sure, go for it. And I loved it. I worked like I was supposed to be there from like 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. I'd be there at seven to like six. Like That's I awesome. loved it and I learned so much and it wasn't glamorous. It was really tough and I had to really work hard. So and like I, what? What kind of things did you take away from that job? Do you think? Oof, I mean, I learned what truly makes a script great because I had to do I had to read a lot of scripts and do coverage on a lot of scripts, which is reading it, writing a summary, saying if you think they should move forward with it, if they shouldn't, why. Oh, wow. And I did that. My first one they had me do was a 400 page book. And I was like, I had no, I had never done coverage. That's not even a script. <laughs> yeah, it was wild. And so I did that. Yeah, I would do a lot of like pro cons. I'd watch so many short films and give feedback or be like, this director's interesting. A lot of like really busy, not glamorous work that like no one really wants to do, but I was happy to. And then I worked there over the summer. I worked there the next year and it was... But you had already done your hours. You didn't have to, you didn't have to no, go back No, there. no, I just, I loved it. Like, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And then um, it was May of 2020 is when I graduated and school had gone on to Zoom and I'm a workaholic. So that was like really tough for me because I just wanted to be like busy all the time and doing zoom school isn't really busy like doing school school and so I wrote a treatment an outline of what I thought was a documentary that needed to be told and I sent it to this really incredible uh producer I know Gerilyn White Dreyfus and was like hey I wrote this treatment I think this is a story that really really needs to be told um and I, I can't discuss the topic of it, but uh, I can, I'll work around that. And, um, and she was like, amazing, sent me, and she doesn't respond very quickly. She's very busy. Like she makes hundreds of films and she responded in a few minutes and was like, amazing, love it. Um, and sent me- was this, was this um, a 
a true a true story yeah it's a documentary <laughs> and sent me back a list of five directors one of which was ross kaufman who's my favorite documentary director of all time he made a film called born into brothels he won an academy award for that and is just like he's just unbelievable he's a brilliant brilliant artist that does justice to real people in their stories and I was like oh my god like born into brothels is my favorite documentary like this is so amazing and then I met with him and is uh, a producer he works with Robin Honan and I mean he understood my vision I really clicked with his vision um and we all the three of us just really connected super that's well. magic when that happens because it, those things don't happen that often no no they don't and went yeah it's magic it's like really just meant it, to be it, yeah and we were at so at ease with each other and just it was like we'd known each other forever and um it was amazing and then after a month of really wooing them uh they agreed to sign on and we've been working on that project ever since. And I had been working on, you know, getting, it was really development development on a book, a New York Times bestseller called A Child Called It during my like junior, senior year, but there wasn't even a script. It was really being written. It like the script was being written and um, it was just very like development um, on that one. and. Yeah, anyway, so the script had gotten written on that by the time I was graduating and it was it was solid. It was good. Uh, written by David Ross Goldblum, who was phenomenal. And fast forward like September, I got an email that said, um, you've been shortlisted for the Forbes 30 under 30 list. And I was like, what? Like, I didn't even know that was like a thing you can I had no idea. I thought it was like, you know, like really famous, successful people through their publicists. Like I had no idea. And I was like, oh, okay, great, whatever. I'll fill it out. Like I'm obviously not going to get it, but I'll like fill out the thing. And then on. Lo and behold. Exactly. And then uh, I only know the date because it's my mom's birthday, December 2nd. I had to take my dog out at like 4 a.m. And I opened up Forbes because I was like, why not? Like, whatever. You just get it over with. And I saw my name and was like, holy shit. Like, that just was like, this isn't real. And I called my parents. They were asleep. I called like, and all my friends were asleep. It was like 4.30. And I just was alone with that news for like a couple oh, I of hours. I, I would have woken everybody up. I wouldn't I care. I, like, <laughs> I would have gone to the neighbors. I would have just yeah. stood on the corner and screamed it. I, I, you know what? I might as well have because I was like screaming and crying. I had my four dogs to like really celebrate with. Um, and, and then I went and got a really nice bottle of champagne and celebrated with friends later. It was a, it was a great day. It was a great wow. day. And, That's very um, cool. It was really cool. And then through that, I met a lot of my best friends on the planet, um, people in different industries, which I really like. I can only talk oh, about yeah. my industry. Oh, Winnie, my industry for so long. Um, so that's really nice to connect with other entrepreneurs, a lot of women and um that's just, that's been the greatest blessing out of Forbes for me, in my opinion. Like, yeah, it's great. It's validity and whatnot, but the people- But having that new that, circle of friends, it's it's really interesting. Um, when people get together, that just, again, meant to be, you get together and, and it's not work-related. It's not, you know, through a friend. It's all just like, like something like Forbes where- everybody's a different walk of life. Everybody's geographically, so, you know, there's differences. And um, yeah, I think that's awesome. It's it's very sincere. Yeah. Like, it's like no ulterior motives. And 
I met yeah, nobody my, wants anything. You yeah. don't have to prove anything. You've already proven it by being on the list. And so everybody's in the same boat. And that's nice. Yeah. I don't need stuff from them. They don't need from me. Like you totally nailed it. And I met two of my best friends, Tori Robinson and Leo Malley, who founded a company called Boys Lie. It's a clothing company on that list. They were accidentally put into the Zoom chat, the Zoom intro for Hollywood and entertainment, but their art and style. And the, I just loved them. I loved them. And where do they them. live? They live in LA as well. And I mean, they're my inspiration for business. Like they're ultra, ultra successful women working in a male dominated, dominated space. And they're working at the highest level. And it's really incredible. They really inspire me. They lift me up. They're like family. And it's really nice to be surrounded by people overachieving um, in LA in the workforce and yeah that's motivational too you know it's totally kind of you cut I think you kind of um I don't know what the word is but you kind of those kind of positive things it's nice when those things rub off on you yes like most totally. of the time it's the negative things about people that rub off on me yeah. so um yeah so that's really nice I get a mix of the both but to have like the positive and I mean, they lift me up. They inspire me. I'm really lucky to have those. How old are in they? My life. Uh, they both are 28. They're oh. 28. And they're just amazing. Like I, when I've been like, I don't know if this is going to work out. Like Tori's been there to pick me up and um, really just like believe in me. And that's, that's nice. Which is nice because not everything's easy. Not everything yeah. happens quickly. And not, yeah. not every. Some things don't even happen, you know, right. sometimes things just don't take off and that's okay too. Totally. It's all okay. It's totally. all baby steps and it's. But it's nice to have people like yes. holding your hand while yeah. you're there. And um, reinforcing the positivity because that's, yeah. that's what you need. And encouraging. Yes. Yeah. It's good to have encouragement and people who believe in you, um, especially when it's people who have been through all the stages and. Are where and it's they not are. family and it's not your childhood best friend. It's... Right. Like they don't have to do <clears throat> right. that for you. And um, that's been such a blessing to have that. And oh, I also skipped over. So I, yeah. So I, no, I founded my company. Yeah. And then Forbes and just been rolling along since, which has been amazing. It's been really busy, but I like being busy. And I feel really compelled to tell meaningful stories. Like, and have you finished a film yet? Yeah, I finished one. It was um, like a feminist take on the IVF process oh. called For Good, which I star in and produce. I oh, wow. star opposite Charlie Depew, who was in The Amazing Spider-Man. Um, He's been in a bunch of stuff. He's really wonderful. Directed by Lucas Dong, um, which was great. We shot that in wow, February 2021. Um, peak COVID. So it was fun. Yeah, it was, yeah, lots of fun. It was, oh my God. Yeah, I don't, shooting in COVID was a nightmare, but it's okay. We did it and the film turned out. Uh, and you live to tell the tale. Yeah, exactly. And the film turned out incredible. Uh, we just, uh, it just was at the Holly Shorts Festival and showed at the TCL Chinese Theater, which was really incredible. Like, wow, that's, that's exciting. Such a, yeah, it's such a huge theater to be able to screen a movie. It was yeah, no kidding. amazing. Well, that's cool. So what's next? Oh, a lot of stuff. I'm producing a film called Isochronic that William Brent Bell is directing and Sienna Oberman's producing. And I have- and, that, and that's with your company? Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, I think it's those three that are going right now. I mean, I'm definitely forgetting one, but- I don't know. So 
all three are happening at the same time. You're working yes. on all three. All three. The same, at the same but presumably time. they're all three in different stages of production. Yes. Yes. I have well, two of them, isochronic and a child called it could go around the same time. And then the other one is in a different stage. So it's exciting. It's good. It keeps me busy. No kidding. It's really cool. So, um, okay. So aside from filmmaking, what do you, what else are you doing to keep yourself busy? Not that there's many more hours left by the time you walk the dogs, feed the dogs, yeah, you know, exactly. work, you Just come hard. home and, um, yeah. I mean, therapy, dating. That's always good. That's what yeah. this is like for me. This is like therapy for me. Cause it's interesting yeah. to, it's interesting no matter how well, you know, your friends, it's interesting that when you ask people specific questions, how it triggers, you know, their answer, obviously, which then triggers me thinking about things. I find it very, very therapeutic. Like, I wouldn't even mind doing this with strangers. Well, you're great at it, too. I'm not, but I'm I mean, learning and I'm trying. In the headphones. Hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, yeah, I think that, yeah, I find it, um, this is my therapy. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for participating in my therapy. You're welcome. Uh, you can pay me my 250 <laughs> fee at the end of the hour. No um, problem. Yeah, therapy keeps me sane. Work is like therapy for me. Um, I'm very into like working out in uh, sports massages. Um this year, I've been really focused on like doing things to make me better physically, wellness. mentally. Like wellness. Yeah, yeah. So I do a lot of that in my free time, and then movies, like just watching, consuming movies. Okay, so since since your mom moved away and I moved away, um, I discovered Awful. this place. Horrible. I know. <laughs> Weird. I discovered this place that I keep thinking your mom's been to before. But um, this place called Calabi. How was I near San Diego? And it's like a health I've farm heard of that. place. We have to go. You would love, love. People go for either three days, four days, or seven days. Are you vaping? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I did that so discreetly. Sorry. <laughs> Nothing gets by me. I know. I was like, somebody that's kind noticed. of seen it all. I, yeah. I know. So, um, I vape. I, it's true. I do it. It's bad. I don't recommend it. Save yourselves. I know so many people that vape. Do you, did you ever smoke cigarettes? Never. And you still vape. The only people I know that vape are ex-smokers. That's funny. No, I never, I never smoke cigarettes unless I'm like, I don't know. Wasted. Don't, wasted. Yeah. Like even then though, not, not really. So how long have you been, how long have you been vaping? I picked it up end of college. Isn't that funny? Yeah. I never did in college. Like it was a big thing in college, never did it. And then end of college, I got very into it. And then I quit for a while and then was like, it's COVID. Let me kill my lungs because they're going to get ruined by this disease. We don't know about anyway. Have, yeah. you, have, have you had COVID? Like three or four times. And you're vaccinated and you're yeah, boosted. Fully vaxxed and double boosted. Yeah. I don't know. Bad I'm, luck. Bad luck. My dad yeah. gets it a lot too. My mom never gets it. Yeah. I mean, either, but I don't even like to say it. I don't like to, to um, tempt fate, but exactly. um, yeah, I'm, are you going to get a third boost? Yeah, for sure. You are. I'm all about boosting and whatever. Do you get flu shots? I do. I used to, I in high school, I didn't because it would give me the flu, but now- Me too, me yeah. too. And my doctor says that's impossible. My doctor says that you must have already had the flu, but you didn't. You weren't symptomatic until whatever. And I'm like, no. no, no, no. Gave me the flu twice, yeah. two years apart. I'm not doing it again. And I haven't done it again. That's how I felt. And I hadn't gotten it until like two years ago. And then I didn't get the flu, but yeah, I'll take a flu shot. I mean, these things are kind of created for a reason, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and 
And again, I know so many people that right now have COVID, but the difference is, you know, they're at home feeling like they have the flu or a bad cold or whatever, and then they're fine. So these vaccinations must be doing something right because- Totally. Yeah, it's-, it's I'm a firm believer in getting vaccinated. Yeah, me too. Like I, me too. I really, really believe in it. Me too. Sometimes That's I wonder- a big issue if people don't. Yeah, and I know a few, not a lot, but I do know a few people that are very anti-vax, so. Yeah, uh, that that is a shocker to me. Yeah, it's, but I guess when you have kids and you read things and you hear things, I guess, like I wonder now if I had small children, how I would feel about it. Yeah. You know, because it's, I mean, I mean, back in my children's day, there's just no choice. You just went and did it. And now there's not a lot of choice because you need it for school. But there's, um, but people still, you know, have used religion or whatever, or medical reasons to not get the children vaccinated. So it's interesting to me, really. But yeah. again, it was there was no choice once upon a time. Yeah, I wouldn't even know. I mean, I don't, I'm so far away from having kids still. I, I'm like, I'm like looking at my dog being like, well, like, I do what the vet tells me. But I <laughs> yeah, if my vet it. says if my vet says you need a vaccination, you yeah. get a vaccination. So, yeah, of course. Um, so how many dogs do you have now? Four. Oh, you do still have four. I didn't know if I missed one somewhere. Well, I didn't know. Well, Russ passed and then I, I knew got, that. I got Winston. I have Winston who's rescued from the South Korean meat trade. Then I have Atticus, who was found on the side of the road in Texas. He's like a little chihuahua. And then two beagles rescued from laboratory testing. And they are my world. And I know, I that's, my- I know that's a passion of yours, too. Yes, I, I really feel very strongly that there's, I just don't see the reason why in 2022 we're using animal models and animal in in testing for pharmaceuticals or cosmetics or for people for people not 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 lipstick for the pigs not you know not and it's a 28 billion dollar industry 65,000 beagles are killed every year and the testing is I mean really just no, it's, it's crazy, and and it doesn't translate. And I just think it's torture for the sake of torture. And I feel really strongly uh, that it's time to move in a different direction. No kidding. Yeah, I um, just absolutely egregious. And you know, a lot of people can be like, it hap- It doesn't happen in our country, but it is happening here, and it's happening like mad there are breeding farms for, no there's yes it's yes. criminal there, there's you a, took me to my first introduction to the I beagles did. and i did yeah so that was really really special um there is a college in texas maybe a and m i can't remember texas a and m that breed um i think labs i'm Golden not quite Archie sure Eagles. oh that they do yeah. ms Yes. That they test MS on. It's like, huh? How many dogs do you know with MS? It's like. They give it to them. Yeah. that's Yeah. So they can then do testing. It's insane. Yeah. It's and, absolutely criminal. Yeah. And for people that don't know why beagles are the most heavily tested dog that there is, it's because they're the most docile. Yep. Makes they don't even. fight back. Yeah. They're forgiving. Yeah. Um, they're crazy. It's just like. It's so crazy. Barbaric. Happening. It's barbaric. Yeah. yeah. And my two that I got are were so traumatized. I couldn't touch Walker for four months without him peeing himself. Like it's oh, no. it's not just like a little lipstick. It's like they are so neglected and abused. It's 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 just unfathomable. The um yeah, that's it's so sad. And I remember when there was a shipment of beagles that were rescued from wherever that had landed and came to where both of us were. And um, 
the cages were open and they walked on grass for the first time. Did you get one of those? I, I did remember. from South uh, Korea. Oh uh, yeah, I couldn't yeah. remember. It's like, imagine walking on grass for and your first I, time. You were with me when I adopted Walker at that one gala in like Japan. Oh yes, yes. yes. You were with me. Oh, that's that. right, that's yeah. right. Wow. But yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. And what's crazy is that people either don't know, which why would you know if you're not in kind of the animal movement world? Right. Or, you know, whatever, if you don't see something on the news or on the internet, whatever. But people don't know that this is a thing. Yeah. That, that you know, I mean, there's animal abuse everywhere, but animals being tested on again like, for makeup like and brands that we use all the time, like SC Johnson. It's it's yeah. crazy. I mean, for a while I was, I mean, I go through phases where I'll check to see if something is deemed, you know, animal cruelty free. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing that things that aren't, but, um, but I think in California, you can't even, I think, I'm not going to say it right, but I don't think, you can, I th don't think you can test, do cosmetic testing anymore. I, I, I don't know. I don't know about either like, can't or, or the law is going laws. going to be in effect. Hopefully, I mean that would be amazing. But there's so many other types of testing that go on, not just cosmetic. That yeah, and know. it's not just California. I mean, there's right. 49 other states right. to battle as well. So right. it's pretty crazy. Right. Um, so so yeah, that's another passion of yours and mine. Huge, and you um, introduced me to it. So I like I am forever in your debt because you really you, oh. you open the floodgates. Well, forever in your debt because I know you've done a lot, a lot for this for this cause, which is just super, really super. Um, and okay, so trying to save save animals and vaping and exercising. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what I discovered. Tell me, Candy Crush. Oh, <laughs> that's my new pastime. How sad God, is that? I haven't heard about Candy Crush in so long. I oh, I'm slow. It. I am slow. It took me a while to find it. And Rummy I Cube. I stuck at Candy Crush. Did you ever play Rummy Cube? Horrible at that too. Oh, you are? <sighs> um, hmm. Really bad. Even worse at that one. Well, did your mom play that? She's big into apples to apples and Scrabble. Oh, she is Scrabble. Scrabble's good. I don't she's know what apples. Great at in words with friends. She's great at. Yeah, I never did that either. But maybe I should do a oh, Wordle. I do Wordle now. Oh yeah, yeah, same same type of thing. Um, and do you know what you're going to do over the holidays? I'm not sure. I I probably will go to Boston to be with the family. Um, and not sure about like Hanukkah Christmas time but hopefully somewhere with snow I like um, a white Christmas yeah do you know what it's it's hard being I always found it hard being in California during the holidays I'll come because visit it's just, you I'll yeah, come visit yeah. your, your snowy oasis that would be awesome I would love it <laughs> um I think that I wish I knew how to ski I love I know you ski. do do you snowboard no, I haven't tried it. I want to try it, but like, I don't want to break my wrists. Oh, is that what, what happens to Probably. snowboarders? If it's me, like, yeah. With my luck and coordination, for sure. Yeah, my, me. I have no coordination. It was really funny because um, Terry and I took a skiing lesson. This was like three years ago. So we're super old anyway. We took a ski lesson. Uh, private lesson together though so we're in the ski lodge and it must have taken me an hour literally to get the boots on that was the most <laughs> horrific experience Hurt of so my bad. horrible it's horrible yeah. so so but I'm doing it all myself everybody's helping Terry nobody gives a shit that I'm struggling <laughs> anyway so we have our boots on we're ready to go out there and I'm kind of wobbling along and Terry's like I can't do this I can't walk in these so <laughs> two friends, one got on one side of him, one got on the other, and slowly walked us out to Buddy, whatever it's called, where buddy our lesson slow. was. And so we did a couple of pizza slices or whatever that is. And then I fell, I just kind of tripped and fell. But 
I was flat. I wasn't, I didn't fall going down anything. I was just flat. Okay. And um, so Terry said, that's it. I quit. This is stupid. That's all I said. I'm the one that fell. You didn't fall. What's the deal? He said, I'm done. And then proceeds to run back to the lodge. He couldn't even walk when he went out there, out, but he but ran back. Yeah, crazy. that's great. Um, so that, that was my one and only time. But Not I think for maybe, you too. But I think maybe you have to be under 15 to learn. Maybe. I, I learned really young. I was like three. Um, oh, you did? Yeah, I was super, super young. But you guys I, were East Coast anyway. No, we were in Arizona. When you were three? Yeah. Oh. I, I had no I knew that. to know how to ski, but like I learned and I love it. That's cool. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I, like, I love I watching just, people ski, so I'll watch you. And I, yeah, please do. Like I'm, I'll, I'll give myself this. I am a damn good skier. Like so I cool. really, and I, I'll go for hours by myself. Like I love it. I know my way around. Did your brother ski? Yeah. And he's really good too. He's, he enjoys black diamonds more than I do. It hurts my knees. And it's just like, I'd rather go fast and like have fun. I don't really need to like go down moguls. To show and, off. Yeah. Like I, it's fine. Um, see, here's my trick. I see somebody really good. And I'm at a distance, so I take pictures or I video them, and then I post it saying, "And here I am going down." So slow. good. Now I, I might anymore. need to start doing that. That's, that, that's good. Yeah, I I love to ski. That's like my favorite activity. And do I, water ski as well? Yeah, but I prefer snow skiing because I don't know falling. And, and lakes are cold and like falling uh, face yeah, first into water. Like, I don't, I don't, like that. I don't even swim. So I don't like that yeah, at all. And, and I won't do it in the ocean because I'm afraid of sharks, even though they're like, no, not there. I just, I, I yeah. Don't, no, I don't even, I'm afraid of the little guppies <laughs> yeah, swimming I, around. I don't want any of that. And lakes are, they're just cold. And dirty. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. if it's not blue and I can't see the bottom, I'm not going to swim in it anyway, so, no, no matter so what. You would, you would do it in a bathtub. You yeah. could water ski in a bathtub. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that yeah. is it. Um, well, that's my favorite body of water anyways. I'm thrilled with a bathtub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a bath person anyway. Yeah, like, I, that I do know. Yes. Yeah, showers, I don't want any of that water getting all, all of my yeah. face. And yeah. We're not sending you into the ocean to water ski. No. I, don't, I have no desire. Do you know what else is weird? As often as I used to go to Hawaii and you guys were in Hawaii, I can't believe we were never there at the same time. Isn't that it weird too? It blows my mind. I know. We would Speaking go to the oceans. same resort, yeah. same place for like years, years and yeah. never, and it always bummed me out. And I know, one weird. time we were on the big island and you were like on Lanai or something. I've never been to Lanai. You were on another island, remember? Yeah, I may have been in Maui or something. Maui. Oh, yeah. 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 And I was like, I really want to see you, but I'm not getting on one of those. That's right. Tiny oh, yes, planes. that's right. I remember. I was like, you can come to me. I am not getting on one of those <laughs> tiny single engine planes. Like, I love you, but like, no. No, but they have proper planes that do that. Maybe. I don't know. You should have come to me. I was on oh. the better island. Yeah, it, it is the better island. Um, Maui's nice too, but I'm, I mean, I'm biased. Yeah, but I love any place in Hawaii. Me too. And, so um, great. Yeah, I, I think. Um, I need a vacation. I would yeah, me too. To We're talking about all this and I'm yeah, like. Yeah, I'm like. I, it's time. I it's, go, yeah, yeah, it's, it's time. Time, time to get out of Dodge. Yeah, exactly. You just tell me where to go and I'll, I'm coming. Like yeah, I, no, I, Me I, too. Yeah, I need a break bring one of your babies. I'll bring one of mine and let's just go. No, no. It. But when you come visit me, you can bring them all. I would I'm happy for everybody. I oh love my God. Mine You're are so old. They're so mellow and they're I'll, so old I'll and they don't bake care. For you. I'll bake for you and be unlimited entertainment. But did you, you're, yeah, that you are, I know. Yeah. But did you learn how to bake during um, the pandemic? I learned how to cook during the pandemic. I've, I've always, I can bake but a little bit, I mean, very basic, but I learned how to cook like food. Did which, you learn how to do sourdough, uh, 
sourdough, sourdough bread. bread no but I bought a lot of it thinking that I would and I just never did yeah I, I, I have a I friend that rolls. became an expert at it, it yeah like, I feel like I knew that yeah it's yeah. crazy like how do you just kind of wake up one day having never baked bread and then become like they were the fanciest they were just amazing loaves and because it was during the pandemic and it was the height of it when everybody was still masked and you weren't really meant to go any place, she used to just bake five a day and take them to friends and just leave them. Are like, they see pictures were great? But, oh my God. I'm going to, I'm going to text you some pictures because you won't even believe what these I things would, look like. Well, okay. Please do yeah, because I, I love fresh baked bread. Yeah. The best. On our vacation, we'll just bake. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, I love it. We'll just eat our way through wherever we'll we eat are. Eat our way through. Sign me up. That's yeah, um, me too. That's, that's like me. Heaven. You know me. Yeah. Um, are you still vegan? Um, or yeah. are you still eating vegan? It, yeah. yeah. Um, love that. And is the bread vegan? Yeah, sourdough uh, always is. Is it okay? Yeah. Isn't that enough. funny? Yeah. Shows my knowledge. Um. And most of the breads are, um, not most, but a lot of breads do have honey in it. And I'm not opposed to honey. I love honey but, in my bread. But the sourdough doesn't, but a lot of bread does. And my husband, who's super vegan, would never eat honey. So, right, right, right. Um, that's good. That's funny. Um, okay, so can we do a part two to this soon? I would love to. Me too. Hopefully I'll have, I'll have like an eighth dog by then. <laughs> no. Yeah. Knowing me. No, but I hope it's even, I hope we could, I really want to do it when you're, when one of these three projects are finished, but yeah. I'd, I'd happily do, do it before then too. And, and but, next time we are with you and you're hearing our voices, we'll be together on a vacation somewhere. That's yes. how it's going to be. Yes. No, that would be fun we, we, if we had giraffes in the background or or a ski slope in the background or a beautiful ocean. Oh, yeah. Any of it. Yeah. We'll come or an amazing kitchen or just family. a great kitchen. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> With mountains of groceries. Just We're good. So, yeah. Just baking our way through an interview. I love it. Oh, I'm excited. That's what, that's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm serious. I, I'm going to text you. Uh, because please do. When we finish this, I'm going to go feed dogs. And then I'm going to text you coming up with some ideas. I love it. That sounds perfect to me. And thank you for having me on. Oh, thank you, you so much. This was really fun. You. I knew you'd be fun. I love I you. I love you. I love talking to you. I could talk with you for hours. Like, you know, you're Good. just my favorite. <laughs> Save it. I will. I will. And it's, I'm so lucky to have met you and be on this ditto. journey of life ditto. with you. I just, I love you so much. Your family. Ditto, ditto, ditto. Do you know the tooth, to totally change the subject in the middle of our goodbye, do you know the <laughs> toothbrush that your mom uses? Yes. So anyway, she got me using it and then I kind of, I think I packed it away or went away and then kind of ended up not knowing where I just ended up losing it or something. And then, so I was just, I started using normal toothbrushes for like a year. And finally I thought oh, I, I need to buy a new one of those. I really missed it. So every day when I brush my teeth, I think of your mom. She oh, would love that. Well, I'll be sending her this anyway. So <laughs> Okay, gotta go feed. Love Yay. you, and I will. I'll text you later. But I look forward to speaking to you again here soon. Perfect. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you, and thank you, thank you, anybody that's listening for Yay. listening to us. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. 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 Thanks so much for tuning in today, and be sure to follow Gabbing with Girlfriends on here so you never miss an episode. You can also find us on social media for more fun and in-depth conversations. Thank you.